Back to you in the studio, BG. <laughs> Thank you so much, <laughs> Kelly M. Hey, welcome to the BG Show. It's a mess over here. It's your boy BG. And this week we have so much to talk about, including the first thing everybody's talking about, and that is should Canada be ending pandemic restrictions? Everybody has to weigh in on this. But we're also gonna talk about red flags. We love to put a mess over here. So you know those glaring signs that the person you're dating is not the one? Yeah, we're gonna get into all of that. Plus, I sat down for a one-on, or not a one-on-one, -on -one, but a one-on-three interview with comedians, the Tall Boys from the CBC show, Tall Boys. And finally, we wrap up today's show with a doing too much moment that, honestly, you're definitely gonna say those exact words. But before we get into all of that, we needed to do a few things, like subscribing to this channel right now, tapping that notification bell, and make sure to follow us on all of our social media. Those details are in the description just below. All right, the big question. Should Canada end all COVID restrictions? Yes or no? No. <laughs> you can't stay on the fence. Yes or no? I don't want to answer. I got slandered in the comments for not knowing my rights. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so listen. But no. No, you say no. Burns. Yes. 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 Well, everybody's talking about it because as you know, the Western provinces have gone off the rails if you want to call it that, but they've decided to get rid of these COVID restrictions. We're talking about Alberta, for example. Jason Kenney, the premier there said, we're done. Scott Mo from Saskatchewan also said, we are done it done, okay? I would argue that Jason Kenney was more done done than Scott Mo because he came out and said, it's over at midnight. Right, he, he didn't even give it a timeline. Cinderella, it's done. <laughs> when the clock strikes midnight. But here's over. the thing. Does but they live, they're not as compact as Ontario. In Toronto, we're like sardines. We're sardines. Like people breathe in your mouth. Like I don't want you in my mouth. Oh, Move. <laughs> okay. Let's take a second. Let's roll it slowly. I think we should be easing up. You know, it's an interesting point because we took it to the streets and people had, we're a little bit divided on this. Take a listen to what some of them had to say. Do you think it's time for Canada to drop all um, mandatory restrictions, like COVID restrictions? Yes. Yeah. You just have to live with it. Maybe not all, but I feel like we should start treating COVID kind of like the regular flu because a mm -hmm. lot of us are vaccinated, mm -hmm. like myself. I work in healthcare, so part of me wants to see it gone. Yeah. But I also see the real time effects. The real, real time effects, yes. I don't think totally because mm -hmm. every time Canada decides to do something, another variant multiply so i think that we should tread cautionally not too fast because you're not too fast because mm -hmm. you don't want to go back to ground zero got it which makes a lot of people frustrated got it quebec has kind of talked about how they're going to unravel this right dev what yeah, do they say more of like a phased approach like you know taking it step by step but still now they're talking about lifting restrictions too, which is interesting because we saw the crackdown in Quebec, right? They were threatening the vax tax and all mm -hmm. that, and then they pulled back on that. Listen, I think the big question everybody is wondering is this. Is COVID real? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. Have we hit our peak? No, we know <laughs> it's real. I think that's the better question. Yeah. Have we hit our peak? There are a lot of countries out there that have decided to say, you know what, we're, we're done in this. We're gonna live with this, and we're just gonna allow it to be part of our regular society. One of those countries is, which one, Dev? Denmark. And how are things going over there with Denmark? Their cases are going up, but hospitalizations are low. Interesting. Now, the UK is another country that has rid, rid themselves of, of, yes. of COVID restrictions, right? So they've got really lax COVID restrictions right now, and they're planning on ending them all on the 24th, and they're seeing cases go down. They're seeing a steady decline there. Well, here's the thing. Canada has one of the highest vaccination uh, statuses in the entire world. We've heard a lot of public health officials say it's time to start living with COVID, right? We've heard it from uh, Ontario's top doc, Dr. Kieran Moore. We're hearing from other provincial health officials as well. But what does that actually look like? Because right now we still have some really strict mandates in place. For example, you still can't board a flight in Canada if you're not fully vaxxed, right? Like that's an issue. And you have to think about it like there are people in this country who have family members who don't live in this country, who right now, if they're not vaccinated, can't go see those family members? What if they're vulnerable? What if some, one, someone has passed away? And I think we have to start reevaluating, is this still serving its purpose? And I'm not saying that we should just get, get rid of it all. No, because I'm just we're saying, still in a pandemic, right? So there's pros to lockdowns, like easing, you know, the stress on the hospital systems, taking care of vulnerable people who are here. Mm -hmm. I just feel like there's a lot of dismissing now of COVID and the severity of it and the, really the need to get back to normal because people have looked at it as like it's become a bit of a money-making business like you look at how much it costs just to get a pcr test literally it costs nearly 200 dollars to get a test when you look at america some states you can get it for free who's making all this money when you take yourselves two two months back when you wanted to get um a rapid test some big pharmacies were caught 
charging 40 bucks. 40 bucks to get a rapid test that you can literally take at home that the government's now giving out for free. So if you're somebody who's like been struggling with the concept of COVID already, struggling with the need to get vaccinated already, and then after you're looking at all these costs, like there's all this money involved now, the optics just don't look right. It, it gives off a feeling like, is this thing really what it is? Or is it here to make some people profitable? COVID is real. But at the same time, people are yearning to get back to a sense of normality. And the government needs to make a decision. Are they gonna continue down this road? Or are they going to now start to adjust? because normal needs to come. Anyways, let us know, do you think it's time for Canada to remove all COVID restrictions? We wanna know in the comment section right now. Okay, can we switch gears and get a little bit messy? I'm down. That's what we do. We're talking red flags. What are your red flags when it comes to relationships? Everybody answer really quickly. What are your red flags when it comes to relationships? Two big ones. You don't drive mm -mm. and you talk too much about money, how much money you have. You always have to show me how much money you have on you, all your cash. Mine too are you can't live with your parents, but specifically you're an adult and your parents take care of you. Like I don't care <gasps> if you're saving rent, but if they're doing your laundry and your dishes and cooking your meals, we're done. And number we're two, <laughs> uh, you can't be talking all kinds of nonsense about your ex all the time. I don't want to hear about your ex's problems. They're Mama! your ex for a reason. <laughs> on, on, on to the next one. Burns? I'm going to say hygiene. You know, like not leaving your clothes everywhere. Okay. Messy. BA, what's, what's your red flag? My number one would be uh, treating customer service workers like oh, oh my God! That's a big one. That is a big one. And you know who also had some big ones? People on the streets. Roll the tape. Do you have any red flags? If he's living with his mother, mm -mm. Okay. and not living in his mother's basement. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but what if he's trying? What if he's trying to like uplift himself and save up for a down payment for a home? Well, we'd have to talk, but I don't know. <laughs> you want to be able to get freaky without his mom hearing, right? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> if they use Snapchat. Oh. Yeah, Snapchat. I feel like they talk to like way too many people on there and just uh. not trustworthy. I feel like Snapchat's okay if like you're younger, but if yeah. you're older and you're using Snapchat still, like I see you as an immature person. <laughs> were there any red flags that you were looking out for before you got married? Not really. Oh, so you were just easy. I hate to say that. <laughs> <laughs> attitude. Ooh, you ain't about the tude. Oh, I don't like the attitude. Mm -mm, Cause you, you got one on you too, eh? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Previously married, previous kids. You ain't, you don't want no baby. Drama. Got it. Save because it for the mama. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Financial history. Credit score needs to be in the sevens or eight? Sevens is fair. Okay, but you ain't touching a six. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> happy Valentine's Day. Okay. Anybody want to wish happy Valentine's Day too? Happy Valentine's Day to my husband. Aww. I love you so much, Craig. Oh. <laughs> Shout out to Craig. He's a good guy. BG, you don't have any. You don't have any red flags. Only green flags here. Wrong. I, I wave a white flag. That means he's the red flag. <laughs> Okay, red flags for me are people who don't brush the, only brush your teeth once for the day. But brush that's hygiene, that's too specific of a- No, but it's- Who did you date that only brush your teeth I know, once I'm a day? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Like, um, and then I would definitely say the second one is if you talk about yourself all the time. So, so someone should, who's self-absorbed. If you're so self-absorbed that you're not understanding that there's other air in the room that people need to breathe, it's just ain't gonna happen. narcissist. Yeah. You know what was interesting though? One lady in the clip said she, her red flags were, Men who were previously married, men who have kids from a different relationship. I thought that was interesting because I feel like then you, t you, cut, you cut out 80% of, of the market. She wants say, a brand new, fresh man who's never looked at a woman She said she wanted a fresh, you know, a fresh breadfruit. At the end of the day, red I think it's okay to have a few red flags. I am concerned for people out there who have a list of red flags that go on to two, you three, four biggie. pages. But some people are. And listen, at the end of the day, you gotta do you. But like, if, you, if that's your list, and it's that long, I mean, you can't be complaining about being single. Yeah. Oh. You get what I'm saying? And on that note, let me ask you this. What are some red flags that you just can't overlook? Let us know in the comment sections right now. That was good, eh? That was a good conversation. Okay, so I'm really excited to share our guest this week because we have a 
Really fun interview with three of the four members of the CBC Gem sketch comedy show, Tall Boys. Have you watched it? Well, you need to, because it's hilarious. Basically, they're a group of four Canadian comedians with diverse backgrounds that have taken a different, more youthful spin on sketch comedy. You ready for this? Roll the tape. Get out, leave while you still can. Whoa, slave ghost? For you. Will you call me a slave? Uh, I was just saying what we're all thinking. Park! Oh, because I'm a black ghost in chains, you think I'm a slave. First you come to my house uninvited, and now this? Honestly, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And I was a slave! Tim, Gulen, Franco, thanks so much for joining us here on the BG Show. Hey, hey thank you for having you. us. We're excited to have you guys. I mean, you guys are the tall boys. It's supposed to be a pack of four. Where, where's Vance? Oh, Vance. oh man, he's, he's, he's in Scarborough. He is, yeah. Oh, yeah. Holding down the East End for us. You know? Okay, yeah, we'll yeah, give yeah. him a pass. We'll give him a pass. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the West End. You know, what was so interesting, as soon as we knew we were going to do this interview, everybody was like, you have to ask them, are they actually that tall? Yeah, I mean, I'm 6'8". I'm, I'm yeah, I'm 6'1", 6'3", <laughs> yeah. with the fro. Yeah. yeah, and I'm vertically relatable at 5'11 and a half. There yeah, you go, yeah, there, yeah. and so how tall is Vance? Vance, Vance is like 6'5", six, six, five. Five. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Where did the name Tall Boys come from? Is it because you guys are tall? Like that's why you guys decided to call it Tall Boys, or? I mean, pretty, pretty much, much, but not, yeah. yeah we, we told uh, one of our friends, Meg, who mm -hmm. wrote on the first season with us, uh, that we were forming a, st a sketch group, Vance, Gulen yeah. and I, and her first reaction was Tall Boys. Yeah. And we're like, oh yeah, I mean, that's an apt description. Why yeah. not use it as a sketch group name? Yeah, we like spent like an hour trying to think of other names just yeah. because that one came right away. And then when we sat around, we just came up with a bunch of different names. We were close to becoming television girlfriends because TV, uh, GF. <laughs> and, yeah, and also homage to the TV show Girlfriends. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great show, by great the way. Show. Great show. When you're tall at the club, you can't hide your gloom. People see you fail from every part of the room. Everyone's looking, I feel like a schlub. But, but this is what happens when you're tall at the club. You guys, like, hit things that are everyday experiences, but you just hit them on the head and you do it in the best comedic way. Like, how did you all get started in comedy? Uh, well, I started, me and Vance went to uh, Humber College. They had yeah. a comedy writing program there. But were you always funny, like even when you were a child? Uh, or did you just feel like you could have been funny? Yeah, I, you know, I was, I was never a class clown. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not a big center of attention type. What about you, Gulen? Uh, I, I started on a whim. Like, I was a terrible university undergrad student, mm -hmm. and a friend saw I didn't like it, and she was like, what would you do if money were an obstacle? And I said, yeah. comedy, and she's like, why don't you try that? And then I just started going to open mics, which is how I met. Franco and then Tim as well. Oh wow. Yeah, I didn't go to college for comedy. I learned from mm -hmm. the streets. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, I joined a sketch troupe called Asian Exploitation back in 2009. Okay. And then, uh, and then afterwards, around 2013, I started stand up, going to open mics, and that's where I met Gulad, and then Tim, and the whole crew. Now, are you guys all from Toronto? Yeah, yeah. born and raised, I am. Vance is from Edmonton. Yeah. Right, that's why he's not here. Yeah, that's yeah. why we're yeah. like, yeah. it's going to be a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, which, <laughs> but which ends from T.O. are you guys from? Uh, I grew up around, I guess I'm, I guess the West, and I'm, I'm near the Annex, like DuPont and Shaw's where I grew up. Okay, I, so yeah. were you really downtown? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. But I went to high school in Etobicoke. I went to the e uh, ESA, so I, you know, I, I got a... Ooh, not yeah, the yeah. Etobicoke School of the Arts. I did, I did, yeah. yeah. He's a renaissance man. <laughs> yeah. I only did drama. I only did, that's one, just one talent. He's the only tall boys that know Shakespeare by yeah. heart. Yeah. <laughs> by heart. He yeah, does. Tim said iambic pen pentameter in a yeah. sketch once, and we're like, what are you... <laughs> <laughs> what about yeah. you, Gulen? Where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up pretty east from here in Kenya. Yeah. That's where I was. Yep. <laughs> pretty <laughs> yeah. east, Scarborough of the world. Pretty, yeah. yeah it's, it's, scar it's a little further east. You gotta take the bus for a while. Yeah. <laughs> but I, yeah, because I came here first as refugee in mm. like in the early 1992, and then like in '96 into about '05, I was in Kenya. Since you were a baby, I've been altering your books to be more inclusive. What? I just wanted you to have a healthy. Child. What? Is every book altered? Raja Hood? Shamika's Web? Consent Dracula? So let's get into the show a little bit because you guys are have gone through a few seasons now. I mean, did you ever foresee yourselves like being in this position right now? Uh, it was always a dream. <laughs> yeah. But like, it, yeah, it's nothing you can see coming. Cause yeah, we did stand up around uh, 
Toronto for many years yeah. before we even became a sketch troupe. And it's a lot of just doing shows at bars mm -hmm. with like, you know, not necessarily audience there to see you perform and you're getting paid in beer tickets. You know, it comes out of left field. It's, it's amazing to have this opportunity and, and yeah. to be a sketch troupe, especially from Canada with yeah. an, a, a, an opportunity like this. The last two years have been like so, so negative. I feel like people have been looking for like positive things to like latch on, on you know whether it's movies or shows and like your show your show is like one of those things that like actually provides people a bit of comedic relief in some dark times like what do you hear on the streets like when people you know when you just hear from fans like what do they say to you guys we have big conversations about social issues especially regarding race as we're like a very diverse troupe it's always great to hear from an audience when you've made a comment on something that like feels so personal, but then hear the universal universality in it. It's like, oh, I relate to that too. I know this experience. You're not alone. Like, yeah, yeah, you're not crazy. Well, like, it's like when you did that Jamaican skit. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that came from real life. Yeah, that was yeah. a real life conversation. When I went to go get food, I got the oxtail for free. I'm pretty sure the guy thought I was Jamaican. <laughs> well, you are. Whoa, just because I'm black doesn't mean I'm Jamaican. What? You are Jamaican. Tim, we've met your parents. Where do you think they're from? Well, I don't know. I mean, where are you guys from? Somalia. Vietnam. Here. Doesn't sound right. Tim, you go to Jamaica every year. Yeah, but that's just to visit my grandparents. Because they're Jamaican? This doesn't add up. Or, or like every other family, all right? We, we, we put on the cricket game. We eat jerk chicken. And deep down inside, we hold on to the hope that someday Vibes Cartel will be released from prison. For me, there was like, I, I, black was always part of my identity first before Jamaican. And there yeah. was a time when I was really young where my, like I had a conversation, I learned from my mom that we were Jamaican. <laughs> like I just thought we were black. Yeah. And then we were like, we imagined like, what if that happened? That's until, crazy that you, just, that you thought you were black before Jamaican. Yeah, absolutely. I'm Jamaican yeah. too. And I, re I grew up knowing I'm Jamaican yeah. and then I'm black. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> were you like, were you, were you surprised when you found out you were Jamaican? <laughs> I was like, oh no, this adds up. All right, yeah. There's been a lot of context clue. I thought we just like, Bob Marley, okay, all right, yeah, yeah. I feel like you're not even black. Like you're black, but you're not like black, black. Ah. Uh. Oh, was that racist? Oh, I'm so sorry, I try to be an ally, but I have a lot to learn. It's fine, I got what you were saying. <laughs> it's working. I'm slowly infiltrating white society. It won't be long until someone invites me to their cottage where I'll wear billabong shorts and go kayaking. You guys touch on like the heavy topics too, but you take it from like this lens of like, it's approachable and everybody can kind of just like grasp it without feeling fear of, of, of talking about it. Do you guys ever get any backlash though? No, I don't think we, we haven't really gotten any actual backlash. Sometimes I'll, you, I personally look at back at sketches and I'm like, man, I might have been able to approach that particular topic in a more like nuanced way. Or like which I, one? Well, I did this sketch called it was date monologue, mm -hmm. and so it's me dating this uh, white girl who's like fetishizing me, mm -hmm. and it was like very surreal growing up as an Asian person who was like emasculated through media, mm -hmm. you know. And one of the references is like, you know, Jet Li didn't even kiss Aaliyah at the end of Romeo Must mm -hmm. Die, things like that. Uh, the, the, the real issues. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the real I didn't issues. mean to laugh. <laughs> 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 like, no, no. I'm one of those people that just laugh in awkward situations when it gets too real. I know. It's just like I'm like, oh man, I'm going. I'm bringing the pace back. Let's let's go down. Back to ha ha. But in that, the, in the sketch was, uh, there was this whole, like in my head, I'm like, at the end, my character, I think, no, her character leaves. And so my, my mind, I'm like, oh, okay. I think that like says that she was able to leave at any point. And like this discussion about, you know, who gets to leave at the table. I was like, in my, if I could go back, I would have both people stay at the table or my character leave and then jump in a group of other Asian dudes who carries him out. All right, I'm gonna stir things up a little bit here, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> <Do> it. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, all right, I'll take it, I'll take it. Uh, you only listen, I've have never a... said that and you cannot prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Got it, guys. You only have a second to think, okay? <laughs> Who's the diva on set? Oh, uh, Gulen. I don't know. Yeah, me? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. Okay. Who's, I... the, who's the funniest on set? Oh, okay, wow. Ooh. It, it's, I'd say it's a day to day. We have power rankings yeah. and that kind of, the, the call sheet will be shifted by who was funniest the day yeah. before <laughs> becomes on top. We tally up the laughs from the previous day and yeah. <laughs> you move up. <laughs> yeah. Who makes you laugh the most offset? 
Oh, wow. Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's also so part of a tallying system. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're like, who, this one's much more complicated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Since you guys are also tall, who's the best at ball? Oh, Franco, no Franco. doubt. Yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah that, that's that's insane. Sure. The shortest this, one? This, this, yeah. no, there's no, really not a lot of power right in that one. It's definitely Franco. Because all of us. <laughs> he, Franco really loves basketball. Yeah. Yeah. I was given the height. Yeah. The love did not come with See, yeah, oh, He had something yeah. to prove. He had something to prove, you know? Yeah. We could be fine just by standing there with our arms up. Yeah. Franco had he, yeah. he had to gain the skill. I was trying to prove something, too, that not yeah. all tall people are good at basketball. That's okay. what I was trying to prove. <laughs> I think I did it. I did it. Yeah, if I hit this shot, I'm smashing the hottest girl in school. Yeah, right. <laughs> no! 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 Yo, Rick, bro. I have no sense, yo. <laughs> yo, this guy's a way you, for real, bro. Absolute way you, man. What's, what's your guy's favorite part of doing this show? Like hanging out with these guys and Vance all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah. That's always the work. It's just to get the hangout part. Yeah, yeah. which is fun. Because like, yeah, when we hang out, like we, like this is our chemistry. We're just having fun and goofing mm -hmm. around. Then the work. That's also cool too. Like getting to make see our idea come to life. And you wrote something, and then you see like a hamster wheel. That's like tall enough for me to run on. And you're yeah. like, I wrote this. I did this, you know? But yeah. then getting to hang out with these guys and just goof around, that's always so fun. Um, you know, as we wrap up, I, I want you guys to kind of tell the audience, for those who may have never gotten a chance to watch Tall Boys yet, why should they watch? I, I have I have children. Oh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Please, for his yeah, children. for my children. Think I of got Franco's children. Tim Gulen Franco, thanks so much for joining us on the BG Show. And a reminder to our viewers, check out Tall Boys. You can watch it on CBC Gem. I feel like those guys were a vibe. I feel like that's a group of guys that knows how to have fun. Yeah, did you enjoy that, Kelly? I did. They were really nice. They were, right? You can join them and be on like their sketch comedy show. I am hilarious. It is my best quality. The short gal to go with the tall boys? Yeah. It is. It is a great quality you have. So listen to this Tall Boys airs on Tuesday nights at 9.30 on CBC and CBC Gem. All right, now what you've been waiting for, our doing too much moment. Dev, you got the details on this one? This week, doing too much goes out to dear Dear Brian. Ooh, dear Brian. Okay, let's tell them who Brian is. So Brian Suave is an American pastor who was called out <laughs> online after he posted what we'll call an open letter to ladies on the internet. Let me read it out to you, you ready? Okay, this is what it had to say. Dear ladies, there is no reason whatsoever for you to post pictures of yourself in low cut shirts, bikinis, bra, and underwear, or anything similar ever. Not to show your weight loss journey, not to show your newborn baby, not to document your birth story. And then he signed the tweet saying, your brothers. Ladies, <laughs> your facial reactions say it all. Men just have too much to say about a body that's not theirs. Mm -mm. Isn't he a pastor? Shouldn't he love thy neighbor? Ooh. Even if thy neighbor is naked. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> How did people clap back then? People clapped back. The ladies of the internet and their brothers had so much to say. And as somebody who uh, I feel like I'm quite frank about how I feel about men telling me what to do, yeah. they did not disappoint. You're doing too much. Doing so much that you ended up trending for it. Oh, that was good. You guys did that so cutely. Thanks, Brian. Good luck, Brian. We are gonna pray for you. Good luck, Charlie. In the meantime, that's a wrap on the show. We wanna thank you guys for watching, but before we go, as you know, News You Can Use comes out every Tuesday and Friday, and they've been hitting, the numbers are reaching. So don't forget to watch those things, and we'll be back next week with a new episode. And also remember to subscribe to this channel, tap that notification bell, and follow us on all of our social media. The details are in the description below. We love you for watching. Hey BG Squad, thanks so much for checking out our channel and listen to this, we have more great content for you like this video right here and this video right here. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to this channel right now and tap that notification bell.